campground etiquette. Now there's a topic that's been talked about a lot over the years, but you know what? Diane and I have been full-time RVers at the time of this video for 11 years, and we've camped in over 450 different locations over those 11 years. So I think we have a pretty good idea about campground etiquette, and I thought I'd talk about it today. So I guess the first thing that comes to mind, speaking of 11 years on the road and over 450 different locations, is why do we see less campground etiquette now than we saw when we started full-timing 11 years ago? Is it because there's just more RVers, so we see more stupidity? Is it because of the generation that's working its way up through into the RV community? Is it just because people care less about people nowadays? I don't know. Or is it because Diane and I are getting older and less tolerant of stupidity? It's probably a combination of all those things, but probably mostly the last thing I mentioned. So probably the first thing I'll bring up about campground etiquette is driving through a campground, abiding by speed limits. Now I understand a lot of the speed limits that campgrounds put in place are really absurd, but you know what? You should put forth an effort and at least try, especially in campgrounds that have gravel driveways. Why would you drive through a campground fast and throw up a bunch of dust so people have to eat your dust? It's just stupid to do that. And you know what else really kills me? It's the people that come in pulling their RVs or driving their Class A's through a campground really fast. I mean, they are really cool people. It amazes me how well people can drive their campers through a campground really fast. They are just, I want to get their autograph. They're just great, great people, right? And then what kills me, sometimes those people that drive through really fast with their campers, they can't back that sucker into a spot to save their soul. Those people of all people should draw less attention to themselves, <laughs> have people watch them drive through a campground really fast, thinking that they're idiots already, and then to find out they can't even back their RV into a campsite. You know what? Just follow the, the speed limits in campgrounds. Be courteous to others. The other thing to consider is don't bother people when they first get to a campground and they start setting up. Don't go over there and start yakking with them. You know, there's a good chance they've had a long travel day. Maybe they've had some issues along that day. Who knows? They just want to come in. They want to get set up. They want to kick back and relax. Now, I get it. If your friends pull into a campground, maybe you want to go over and get a handshake or a hug. Good enough. But, you know, typically people just kind of want to be left alone when they get to a campground. There's plenty of time to talk to them later. Another thing is walking through other people's campsites. They paid for that campsite. That's their property in a way during their stay. You didn't pay for that campsite. They're sitting out there. They want to relax. You walk through the campsite. They have their barbecue set up out there, bicycles laid out there, camp chairs out there, and you go walking through the campsite. What are you thinking? That's not your property. Let those people that rented that site have their privacy. Stay out of their sites. Now, it's okay if you see an empty site. You want to walk through an empty site so be it. But if there's a road 20 feet up and then an empty site right in front of you, walk, walk the extra 20 feet and walk the road instead of going through campsites. Show some respect. That's not your area. Don't walk through occupied campsites. And teach your kids not to walk through occupied campsites. Another thing to think about are your outdoor lights. Be courteous with your outdoor lights. Maybe when it's quiet time, turn off your outdoor lights. Or at least when you go to bed, turn off your outdoor lights. You know, those cap lights that people have, they're all bright and shiny. They're really cool to look at. But you know what? Everybody has them nowadays. They're not that cool. And your patio lights, when you go to bed and go to sleep, turn them off. A lot of times your neighbors may want to open up their blinds, open up their windows, get a little fresh air. But if you leave your outdoor lights on and all they have is your lights glaring inside their windows that's not cool that's not showing respect for others if you're out boondock in the middle of nowhere you want to leave your lights on they're not going to bother anybody so be it but you know what just be courteous think about those outdoor lights next time you go to bed and noise think about noise when it gets to be quiet time i know people can still sit outside they still talk but even low voices can bother your neighbors sometimes Try to keep it quiet, be respectful. And if you do go inside and turn on the music, think about it. 
The walls in these RVs we all know are not that thick. So you start playing your music at nighttime, your neighbors will probably hear you. They may hear you two or three rigs down the road. I know there's been a number of times to where we've gone to bed, music has been playing. I get up at 4, 35 o'clock in the morning. There's been a number of times I wanted to go down, knock on the door, and wake those people up at 4.30 and let them know how much I enjoyed their concert the night before. With a little bit of luck, they may have a hangover even. Anyway, be considerate with noise. Now here, this should be a no-brainer. If you have pets, you take them out for a walk, pick up after your pets. Don't be that person. Yeah, again, like I said, it should be a no-brainer, but apparently there are a lot of no-brainer pet owners out there that don't pick up after their critters. Be respectful, pick up after your pets. Now here's another one. Kids need to be kids. Kids need to have a good time. We all get that. But sometimes I think parents will just tell their kids, hey, go on down the road and play ball, play frisbee, go play catch. I get it, it's all good, right? But maybe the parents ought to pay attention to where the kids are playing catch. More than once, we've had kids playing catch and our RV or our truck has been really the backstop for that errant ball. Look, they're kids. They're not gonna catch every ball out there. And the last thing I wanna see is have a ball come cruising over, hit the side of our coach or the side of our truck. If you parents wanna have your kids play ball, let your rig be the backstop. Not ours, not somebody else's. Be respectful. Now here's one. Don't stick your sewer hose up over a spigot at the campground. Somebody's going to come in after you and hook their fresh water up to that spigot after you cleaned out your sewer hose. And don't throw that sewer hose up on a picnic table. Somebody behind you is going to come in and use that picnic table. They may not wipe it down. They may not put down a tablecloth. And they don't want to have your septic drippings on their table. Don't do it. It just isn't right. Another one is, if you know you're going to leave the campground early the next morning, do some of your tear down the night before. Put things away so you have to slam less doors, make less noise the next morning. Some of your neighbors may be sleeping in, they're trying to relax, and you're out there slamming door after door after door after door, putting things away. And sometimes people don't think about leaving a door open so they can put something in over and over and over again without shutting that stupid door. Now I get up at 4.30 in the morning, so it doesn't bother me so much, but I have looked out a window to wonder, man, did the Brady Bunch or the Partridge family move in next to us? Did they have to slam the door 32 times before they leave for the day? Holy cow, it's crazy. Think about it. Do some preparation the night before. Be courteous to your neighbors. This one is borderline, but you know what? I realize that if checkout's 11 o'clock, you have paid for that site until 11 o'clock. But if you paid for that site till 11 o'clock, don't hang around till 12 o'clock to check out. And I know most campgrounds check in maybe at one or two, but most of the times if campgrounds know the site's empty and a traveler has a short day and they come in, they wanna check in early, most campgrounds will let them do that. But you know what? If checkout's at 11, most campers know they can get in early maybe after 11, and they wanna try and get in and you happen to be one of those lollygag people that get out of there at 12 or one o'clock, you know, it just kind of makes it tough for the person trying to come in after you. Again, you paid for it till 11 o'clock. By all means, stay till 11 o'clock. But don't be late getting out. You might be interfering with somebody else's life right after you. Again, that's kind of nitpicky, but, you know, it is courtesy. All right, there are a few things we consider important campground etiquette items. As I mentioned, we've been full-time now for 11 years. We've camped at over 450 different locations. And in reality, 98% of the time, 99% of the time, we don't run into any poor campground etiquette. But there are times, and you know, a lot of times it's just because people don't know. I think the biggest culprit over the years have probably been kids cutting through campsites. And they do that because their parents haven't told them that it's not cool to do. Um, we've seen a few, few people lay their sewer hoses up on uh, picnic tables. We've seen a few people put their sewer hose on the spigots, but not that often. That's also why we carry um, bleach with us in a spray bottle so we can spray off the spigots before we hook up our water. Keep that in mind, not a bad idea. But again, overall, people are really good. They don't try to do anything stupid. It just comes natural to some people, I guess. So uh, let us know in a comment down below, what things do you see as being the biggest culprit for poor campground etiquette? Etiquette, is that the right word? Leave us, leave us a comment down below what you see happen the most. 
If you enjoyed the video, how about a thumbs up? Consider hitting that subscribe button down below. And as always, have a great day. We'll see you in the next video.